Does leather block EMF? EMF radiations are dangerous, there are no doubts about that. What then is the best way of protecting one against this danger? Can leathers provide enough protection against this danger? Leather does not block EMF radiations. As a matter of fact, it is difficult to find a material that does. The best a leather material can do is reduce the severity of the EMF radiation when it passes through it. Most EMF shielding materials offer the same resistance. In this article, there will be a detailed explanation and review of the EMF shielding leather material's ability. We will also discuss other materials that can be used to block EMF radiation and keep you safe. And by the way, if you want to minimize the EMF radiation you're exposed to in your daily life, I highly recommend checking out the first link in the description below this video. How does leather block EMF? As stated earlier, leather does not block EMF. It can only reduce or attenuate EMF radiations. It is important to note that materials that can actually block EMF radiations are very few in numbers. What most materials offer is the attenuation of the EMF radiation. Attenuation is defined as the progressive loss or reduction in potency of an element as it passes through an obstacle. A popular example that is bound around us includes the reduction of sound when it passes through a wall. Other examples are reduction in the intensity of light when it passes through tinted glass and loss of potency of x-rays when it passes through a lead-laden material. Hence, materials such as copper, aluminum, and lead also attenuate EMF radiations by either absorbing the radiation or scattering the EMF radiation's constituents. The ability of materials to do this is referred to as shielding effectiveness, and it depends on many factors. Blocking EMF radiations with the dangers posed by EMF radiation increasing with time, there is a need to find a lasting solution. The most natural suggestion is to abandon all EMF radiating devices and appliances, which has proved almost impossible. This is because our lives and means of livelihood have been linked to these devices and appliances in one way or the other. Other suggestions have included affecting reasonable distance between gadgets while in operation. However, there is a limit to the distance that can be placed between a phone or laptop computer and its user. Therefore this option is not regarded as very effective. Thus, the idea of blocking EMF radiations comes to fore. This option became very popular as it promises the usage of gadgets and protection from EMF radiations. This means that users do not need to affect any distance from the gadgets. Many materials have been identified as effective EMF blocking materials. They include aluminum, zinc, copper, silver, and many more. Can we really block EMF radiations? Even with these materials application, it turns out that we cannot actually block EMF radiations. Don't get me wrong, you can reduce the EMF radiation from your gadgets and devices within your home and under your control. But what happens when you step out of the house? You are exposed to many sources of EMF radiation when you leave your personal space. When you drive across town, you get within the range of many cell towers and satellite signals, each emitting varying EMS degrees. Your partners at work use computer systems, mobile phones, and many other gadgets. All of these open you to the risk of EMF radiations. Therefore, it is safe to say that you can only block, shield, or reduce E.M.F.'s intensity within your home and personal space. The outside world opens us to the risk of EMF at all times. There are many materials used for blocking or shielding EMF radiations. These materials have been touted by technicians as having varying capabilities in reducing EMF radiations when it passes through. Examples of materials used for blocking EMFs are Aluminum Copper Lead Zinc Silver Aluminum Aluminum is one of the most used EMF shielding materials. It is widely used because it is cost-effective and has non-ferrous properties. Aluminum also has a suitable strength-to-weight ratio and an enviably high conductivity. All of these properties make aluminum an ideal and the most used EMF shielding material. Copper Copper is also another excellent shielding material. Many technicians and engineers prefer it due to its ability to absorb both radio and magnetic waves. Hence, it offers more protection against EMF and radio radiation than other materials. Its downside is the cost. It is a bit expensive, 
It is usually found in use with corporations and large businesses. Copper is also a vital component in another popular material, copper alloy 770. In this material, copper, zinc, and nickel are combined to build a strong EMF shield. This alloy also offers anti-corrosion functions, thereby, it is widely used for industrial reasons. Silver Silver is another effective EMF shielding material. This material offers efficient attenuation against EMF radiation and combines versatility with its lightweight nature to be an ideal shielding material. However, as with copper, silver is a bit expensive, and not everybody can afford it. Lead Lead is used to reduce the effect of any type of radiation, including EMF. It has been one of the most reliable shield materials in the industry for many years now. It is also used to protect patients who are undergoing X-ray examinations. These are some of the protective materials used in the industry to reduce the intensity of EMF radiation. As it has been said earlier, these materials provide attenuation against EMFs and not a total blockade. Factors to consider when selecting EMF shielding materials. Protecting oneself against EMF radiation is important. This is against the backdrop of dangers that have been associated with excessive exposure to the radiation. As a result, many materials have been touted as an effective shield against EMFs. However, in selecting any of these EMF shielding materials, some considerations must be made. This is to ensure that the material selected is not only suitable but also appropriate for the shielding used. The factors to consider when selecting EMF shielding materials include Attenuation effectiveness Effective EMF Weight Cost Thermal conductivity Attenuation effectiveness This refers to the ability of the material to reduce the intensity of EMF radiation passing through it. Attenuation effectiveness varies from material to material. Therefore, depending on the size and magnitude of the EMF to be shielded, it is important to know the material's attenuation ability to be selected. Effect of EMF In most cases, when EMF passes through a shielding material, it causes some changes to the material's physical and chemical properties. Therefore, it is important to know the effect of the aftermath of shielding on the material. For example, metals degrade in certain ways after being used to attenuate EMFs. Concrete also weakens with intensified EMF attenuation. These examples show that the aftermath of EMFs passing through a material is an important consideration. Ensure that the material you are choosing will offer a lasting shielding against EMFs, and also be able to retain its integrity after use. More importantly, ensure that material doesn't emit EMFs after EMFs have passed through it, as it is seen in some materials. Weight A factor that can also be referred to as thickness. There is a standing rule that the thicker a material, the higher its attenuation effectiveness. To a very large extent, this principle holds. Therefore, it is important to ensure that the chosen material is thick enough to provide adequate protection against EMFs. Cost This is a very important consideration too. Some materials are cost-effective, meaning they provide excellent protection at affordable prices. They are other materials that are a bit expensive. While these materials cost more, they offer better protection than cheaper materials. Thermal conductivity This factor is quite important as it indicates one of the aftermath effects of EMF attenuation on materials. Many shielding materials get heated up when EMFs pass through them. As a result of this, the selected material must have a high coefficient of thermal conductivity. This ensures that the material doesn't burn out or catch fire while in use. Also, I just want to quickly mention that if you're all concerned about EMF radiation, you should take a second and check out the first link in the description. Conclusion One of the ways to protect ourselves from EMF radiation is through blocking or shielding, as it is also called. This method has been said to be better and more effective than distancing or reduction of the usage of EMF emitting devices. However, it has been discovered that rather than blocking, what really happens is a reduction or attenuation of E.M.F.'s intensity. Many materials have been used for blocking or shielding EMFs. These materials range from copper to aluminum, lead, silver, and many other materials. Leather, like other materials, does not block EMFs but reduces the intensity of the radiation. 
Moreover, the ability of most materials to attenuate EMFs depend largely on their physical and chemical properties. When selecting materials for blocking or shielding EMFs, some of the factors to be considered include strength, attenuation effectiveness, cost, weight, and thickness, etc. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more useful tips and tricks and visit imfgardtips.com. Thanks for watching.